Yo, what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. And on today's video, well, today's video is the running and training vlog. So primarily, I wanna hear about your week of running. I wanna hear about your successes, and I definitely wanna hear about your setbacks. So go ahead, tell me about your week of running in the comments below. But before I go into my week of running, and I actually had a pretty good week of running, by the way. I did, I did race last week, and that wasn't terrible. But before I get into my week of training, and then that race towards the end of the week, I did wanna to talk to you about drop. Now, of course, you all know what drop is. Drop is the distance measured in millimeters between the stack height of the heel and the stack height of the forefoot. But what does that actually mean? And what does, what does it mean when you have a higher drop shoe versus a lower drop shoe? And spoiler, listen, I need you to stay for just a few more minutes because I have found a study where the researchers compared a positive drop shoe with a negative drop shoe. I know, I just blew your mind thinking about that, but hold on, I'm gonna tell you all about it. And of course, like always, I will provide links to the locations where I found the data that I'm looking at. And first of all, I found an article on RunnerClick talking about drop and the different drops and what different drops do for you. And before we get into like what a different drop will do for your body, whatever you are running in, whatever you find comfortable, that is what's best for you because we're all different. Each one of us is going to have a slight slightly different preference. And there are loads of people that love a zero drop shoe where the heel is the same height as the forefoot. But there are also loads of people that love the Brooks Ghost, which is a 12 millimeter drop, which I think is rather extreme. But saying that, I do love the Brooks Ghost. It is an extremely comfortable shoe. So the Run Click article actually says that a normal drop is 10 millimeters and up, which I'm not sure if I agree with, but I've got no way to actually disprove that. So we're just gonna gloss right over that and we'll we'll take what the Runner Click article says at face value. But basically, the consensus is among people, among runners, among researchers, is that the lower the drop of the shoe, the more that you are going to be encouraged to land forefoot or midfoot, which as we've been told over the years is the preferred way of running. And I want you to stay tuned to the channel because I've got a video coming up where I show that that is not exactly the case. So let's just go over low drop shoe and the things that go with it and higher drop shoes. Now in this article and comparing these things, we don't actually know what a low drop shoe is versus a high drop shoe. We're just calling it a lower drop shoe versus a higher drop shoe. And obviously the drop is on a continuum where something like ultras will have a zero drop at one end and then something else like high heels are going to have a ridiculously big drop. So let's start with low drop shoes. Low drop shoes can actually help you improve your cadence. So if cadence is something that you struggle with, you know that you are ideally supposed to be running between like 170 and 190 cadence, perhaps a lower drop shoe will help you pick up that cadence just a little more. We've already talked about foot strike, but a lower drop shoe is going to encourage you to land more midfoot to forefoot rather than landing on your heel. As far as injury goes, a low drop shoe is going to help you with iliotibial band syndrome or IT band syndrome. It's going to help with knee pain and it's going to help with gluteal overuse syndrome, which actually I didn't know was a thing. I always hear that we have to engage our glutes a little more. Like our glutes are the biggest running muscle that help propel us forward. But apparently some of us are overusing them. And if you are one of those people, then perhaps a lower drop shoe is for you. A low drop shoe does put greater stress on your foot, your ankle, and your lower leg. And if you are wearing a lower drop shoe, even though the shoe does encourage you to land on your mid to forefoot, you do have to actively adopt a midfoot to forefoot strike pattern. So what I'm saying is even though a low drop shoe encourages you to land midfoot to forefoot, if you are used to heel striking, you might have to wrap your brain around landing midfoot to forefoot. It might not seem normal at first. Now, people that run in a higher drop shoe, they are more likely to run at a slower cadence. Now, that's not necessarily always going to be the case, but a lower drop shoe is going to encourage you to run at higher cadence. A higher drop shoe is not going to encourage that higher cadence. With a high drop shoe like my Brooks Ghost, a rear foot strike is more common. Now, running in a higher drop shoe can help with plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendinopathy, and various calf injuries. So, if you have any of those, I know plantar fasciitis, I've struggled with it in the past. It is a very long lasting injury. If you struggle with any of those, perhaps a higher drop shoe could help you through that time of injury. And then finally, the article does say that a higher drop shoe could prevent an over striding forefoot strike, which I'm actually not too sure about because when you heel strike, you are far more likely to over stride than you are if you are forefoot striking. So actually now that I've just kind of talked my way through it, it seems like it's just the other side of the coin. If you're more likely to heel strike in a higher drop shoe, it is naturally going to prevent over striding on a forefoot strike. That makes sense? So a low drop shoe is generally anywhere between zero and four millimeters. And the argument behind like the barefoot running movement, that's actually what made the zero drop shoes take off, is that it allows your foot to move more naturally. And that natural movement is supposed to lead to fewer running related injuries. Now enough time has 
has passed, that we know that's not really the case. But still, the argument is pretty compelling, especially if you don't have the data handy to refute it. A higher drop shoe is generally considered anywhere from eight millimeters and up. Now, off the top of my head, I can't think of any shoe that has a higher drop than the Brooks Ghost, but if you know one, let me know in the comments. And as I'm making a call for comments, now would be a good time to write down your favorite drop. What is the drop that works best for you? And if that drop is different for race day than it is on easy runs, let me know that too. One thing I will tell you is that if you are transitioning to a lower drop shoe, perhaps drop isn't something you've even ever thought about. Perhaps if you're a new runner, you've just gone out and you've bought a pair of running shoes and you thought to yourself, this will do. And now you're hearing from me that there are these different drops and perhaps I should try it. I know that when people ask me for recommendations on running shoes, I usually don't mention the drop. But if a lower drop shoe is something that you want to try, I just encourage you to use patience when you're getting used to it because if your body is used to running with a higher drop shoe then you quickly shift to a zero drop or a very low drop shoe you could find little aches and pains popping up so just ease into it maybe just a couple of miles to start off and then as you start strengthening your body you start getting used to it you can add more and more distance okay but let's talk science for just a second because there was a recent study that showed that patellofemoral joint stress was increased by more than 15% when running in shoes with a 15 millimeter drop and a 10 millimeter drop over shoes that had a zero drop and that patello femoral joint that's like your knee area if anyone was wondering so take that for what it's worth the patello femoral joint stress increases in a high drop shoe but we've already talked about all the other things that increase with a low drop shoe and going back to what i said at the very beginning of this video it's really just up to us and what we find best i can talk about all these things that might happen but if you like something stick with it okay one more study one more study and in this study the researchers looked at the difference between shoes with an eight millimeter drop and shoes with a negative eight millimeter drop. That means that there was a bigger stack height in the forefoot than there was in the heel. So you're kind of running like this. Bit strange, but that took some getting used to for the participants. So in this study, the participants, they wore both shoes and they ran at three different speeds. They ran at their preferred speed, they ran at 90% of their preferred speed, and they ran at 110% of their preferred speed. So normal, bit slower, bit faster. And they found that the runners running in the negative eight millimeter drop shoe, their vertical average loading rate increased by 19%. So I'm sure you've already heard that when we run, it's like the equivalent of four times our body weight. I don't remember what that actual statistic is. But when we run, there is a lot of pressure that's going up through our legs into our bodies with every step. And those impact forces, when running in a negative eight millimeter drop shoe, those are increased by 19%. Not good, but I guess also not good is the 15% increase in the patellofemoral joint stress. But it's not all negative. Well, I mean, increasing your loading rate by 19% seems negative, but the researchers do conclude that running in a negative eight millimeter heel to toe drop shoe may be beneficial because it may store and return energy better. And it may return energy better because the range of motion in negative heel drop shoes are increased on the metatarsal phalangeal joint. Basically, that's your toe knuckles. So imagine this is your foot. There is a bigger range of motion right around here. And on negative drop shoes, that may increase a little bit. But good luck finding a pair of negative eight millimeter drop shoes. Well guys, I had a pretty good week of running. Pretty good week of running this week. It started off with 11 miles very easy on Monday. And as I say every week, you guys know how I love to just start my week off nice and easy. No stress at the beginning of the week. Tuesday, Tuesday was a little more stress, but I did knock out 10.2 miles. And during those 10.2 miles, I did three one mile intervals with 600 meters recovery in between. So I had a nice long warm up, did those intervals, had a nice long cool down. Wednesday was super cruisy, 7.6 miles, very easy, nothing other than running easy on Wednesday. Now Thursday, Thursday was supposed to be my tempo run day, but by Thursday, I had kind of decided that I was gonna race a half marathon on Saturday. So I ran 7.7 .7 miles, very easy on Thursday, but I did include some strides just to get those legs turning over. Friday was eight, very easy. And then Saturday was race day. Now you may be wondering, Matt, why didn't you take any time off before your race? Why didn't you let your body rest before going and racing because this wasn't a goal race and I wanted to go into this half marathon feeling a little fatigued and then Saturday rolled around I warmed up with 1.75 miles knocked out that half marathon then I did a two mile cool down after and I was pretty happy I mean it was a warm day but I can't complain I had a good time it's really nice to push yourself not really nice at the time when it's happening but after the fact it's really fun to know that you pushed yourself and then Sunday Sunday was probably my favorite run of the entire week I knocked out 8.7 miles but the weather was so beautiful it was 
gorgeous blue skies, chilly temperature, and I just had a really great time running super easy on those 8.7 miles. So that brings my weekly total to a shade over 70 miles, which is about 112.78 kilometers. And like always, I did include some time training on the Peloton this week. And this week I knocked out 106.44 miles, which is about 171.3 kilometers. So all in all, pretty good week. Feeling pretty good about my running right now. But guys, who cares about me? I want to hear about you. Let me know in the comments about your week of running. Thanks for staying all the way to the end of the video. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days.